Oh, it is the excitement you've been waiting all day for. CT Sports Now is the program here on Vantage Sportsnet. We are so glad you're with us. I'm Mark Robbins. The young man to my right is no offense. I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm pretty fired up. I'm pretty fired up. I'll tell you what. As opposed to no, most days? Well, yeah, I'm mean, even always. more fired up. Let me just yeah. say, I, because we have, okay, so we have all of these people who work with us, uh, many interns. Uh, Daniel Zampano, who's off today, wasn't even working. He, he decided to stop by and visit. We have three high school uh, interns, mm -hmm. from, one from Greenwich, one from Weston, and one from Amity High School. They're all in paying a visit. Love it. We got really like a, our whole team here today. Makes me happy. We have a large Good studio stuff. audience. Yeah, yeah. From this our show. studios here yeah. at Sacred Heart University. All right, let's get to sports. That's why you're tuning in. You don't care whether I'm fired up. I get it. Let's let's, let's get right to girls lacrosse action. The number one team in the state, Darien. How much would Fairfield Ludlow love to knock off Darien? Well, look at Darien's feeling pretty good. Let her rip. Dance a little bit. In the first half, this thing was close. 3-2, Darien leading and then making it 4-2 on the Charlotte Whitsock uh, goal right there. She just charged and scores. But the Falcons hanging around. Olivia Diaramo just fends off the defender. Lefty, goal. It's a one-goal game at 4-3. to three. And then quickly, Darianne answers. Whitsock, give it up, but hey, you may get it back. <laughs> she does, hmm. and she scores. It's 5-3. But hold the phone. The Falcons going nowhere. Diaramo finds Chloe Mazzio. She deposits. It's back to a one-goal game, and then Ludlow ties it. Diaramo, right there. It's 5-5, and we're pretty late into the first half. Darian coach Lisa Limley calls a timeout, and it worked. Darian counters <laughs> with three straight goals. There's Ashley Humphrey getting one of them. Then that same Humphrey, she's got a sister too, but Ashley Humphrey finds Chrissy Fiore. She scores, and then it's the other Ashley, Nicole Humphrey, getting in on the action here. Uh, clean lane to the cage, 8-5 at that point. Darian goes on to win it 15-8. to So Darian wins, knocks off a, a fellow FCAC team, advances to the semifinals. We know this, Mark. It's going to be a, a, against an FCAC team. Which one? Yeah, well, Wilton and Canaan, a new Canaan. The matchup, as you see there, is Christine Lilly honored as usual, as always. One of the greats at Wilton. And now here comes the rain. Here comes new Canaan. Carly Bucci sneaking around, scoring. Wilton with a free possession. Nothing's free, but Paisley Egan to Taylor Lamontia. It's a 1-1 game early in the first. Then Lamontia to Sophia Sedano. Wilton with a 2-1 advantage. New Canaan answers. Braden Dial dialing it up. She had a big game in uh, the Second in the first round of the tournament, answers right there. It is a 2-2 game. Later on, McKenna Harden with a great move. And New Canaan with a 4-3 lead goes on to get the victory. So it is New Canaan, a 10-6 win over Wilton. New Can All you have to do is say Darianne, New Canaan, or New Canaan, Darianne, and you know what type of rivalry it is. Girls lacrosse, they're going to play on Tuesday. Where and exactly what time is still yet to be determined. So we have that was semifinal set. Yes. The other semifinal, we knew one thing. At least one team in that semifinal is going to be a, a, another FCAC team. That's because you had Ridgefield and Greenwich going at it here in one of the quarterfinal matches. I mean, so far, all six teams you've shown here have all been FCAC teams. Tigers up 5-3 at halftime. Big red on the comeback. Leah Caputo gives herself some space. And she gets one of them back, and then uh, Greenwich will go on the fast break here. Look at the ball movement. Maggie O'Gorman for the deposit. We got a tie game at five. This was one of those games. Great defense. Richfield is able to retake the lead on a free position shot coming up here by Maeve Tobin. She goes low, bounces it in. It's 6-5 Richfield. The Cardinals are able to do the same to tie the game at six. Paige Finneran. Defense really stepping up by both squads out here. And then here coming up is the last goal of the game. Caitlin Slaminko on the free position shot for Ridgefield, but nothing had been decided at that point. It was all defense after that. Greenwich had some chances. In fact, had a couple shots to go off the, uh, off the pipe. And all that was left at this point was celebration for Ridgefield. Finally knocking off Greenwich and at the most crucial time, 7-6 is the final score. So Ridgefield is going to be the third FCAC team going to the semifinals. Mark, to play? Well, there was another one in the other quarters. Fairfield Ward against the lone the SEC squad left the second seed. Cheshire Rams, Cheshire's Annie Eddy from the free position. She had four goals, one right there. Put the Rams up 8-5 early in the third. Ward with its passing, gets right back into it. Olivia Seymour with the goal for the Mustangs. But then it would be Cheshire. 
starting to pull away a little bit. Mar uh, Mia Pulisiano off the free position. She had a third goal, and no, this game certainly would not go to the dogs. Ward cuts it to two. Libby McKenna with the tally. And then Cheshire's Sophie Kurtz stopping the attempt of the Mustangs. And Cheshire running out the clock. Go crazy, Rams. You have done it. Cheshire will not, will, you know, crashes the FCAC party, so to speak. <laughs> they are into the semifinals. It is Cheshire moving on to take on Ridgefield. They'll play that one on Tuesday again. We don't know where or exactly what time yet. For, that'll be a double header, I believe. So those are the Class L uh, uh, semifinals all set. Remember earlier I said I was pumped up because we had all these people in. You think about a guy like Chris Raza who came th through uh, his, his Southern Connecticut State internship with us, and here he is back in studio. He, we, he just can't stay away, and, 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 and we're thrilled <laughs> and we're about glad. it. Yes. Anyway, we turn to Chris now covering the Class M quarterfinal action. Chris. Yeah, what can I say, guys? I just love – high school across and we've got some games down on the shoreline usually that's Dan's territory but I was there tonight and we're gonna start off with the number two seated or no excuse me number one seated hand taking on eight seed Joel Barlow they're getting ready to go early first half Joel Barlow's Sarah Witherby gonna give Barlow the one to nothing lead upset alert not so fast hands Taylor Scully got it here and she's gonna give it over to Liney White Puts it in the net, hand ties the game at one, and they would continue to roll from there. Taylor Scully again with the free position shot. Bam, there you go. Hand takes the lead two to one, and I'll tell you what, they would not look back. Chloe Silva now to Lauren Valuzzi right in front of the net. Puts it in, hand up three to one, and then midway in the first half, Taylor Scully again dodges the defender. There she goes, puts them, on, puts them on ice, and then gets the goal to give Hand a 4-1 to lead. They would go on to win 13-5. to Number one seeded Hand will take on 13 seeded Guilford in the semifinals on Tuesday. Guilford beat the five fifth seeded Woodstock Academy 14-7. to We'll stay on the shoreline as number two seeded defending champions Branford taking on Massick. Pick it up, Branford leading 7-2. That's Sabrina Torsellini for Branford, putting up 8-2. And then about a minute later, Autumn McHenry, Putting Branford up 9-2, to two, and they would continue to roll with a couple more Sabrina Torsellini goals. Right here, they're going to go up 10-2, to two, and then another coming up, going to put them up 11-2 to two, as Branford gets the win 16-5 to five over Massick Torsellini there with the free position shot. Uh, Branford will take on three-seeded Pomperog on Tuesday. Pomperog took down the 11-seeded East Lime 18-13. to 13. Noah, Mark, back to you. All right, Chris, very nice job. Thank you so much. We, uh, we've gotten into girls lacrosse, done a very nice job, and we're not done. No, we have more. In fact, uh, if you're looking at teams from the Stonington, Manchester, Durham, New Fairfield, and much more, we got them coming up next here on CT Sports Now. Stay with us. Welcome back. CT Sports Now coming at you from our studios at Sacred Heart University. Now, Mark, you promised more girls lacrosse. Oh. Actually, right? So you should be all up to speed up to at least this point as we get into Class S as to exactly who's playing who as they've advanced to the semifinals. Right. We took care of the other two classes. Now we're going to talk about Class S and uh, some really talented squads that are having tremendous seasons. One of them uh, got a chance to host today. The third seed, East Catholic, taking on six-seeded Stonington. The Bears getting a chance to uh, go over to the Manchester area late for first half uh, and playing at home East Catholic looking with a, a goal a two goal lead Alexa Weber on her own with the Dodge she is the school's all-time leading scorer with more than 400 goals very impressive there now later uh, in the third quarter now that is a Kylie Callahan for the Bears Stonington getting in that was a late second quarter goal and third quarter now Stonington making a move Emma Sabadini with the tally, followed momentarily. There's a lamb on the loose. That's Hannah Lamb. Right down the slot, tied up the game, and Lamb got loose not once, but moments later, a second time, they find her on the cut, and a beautiful goal. East Catholic now trailing Stonington in the third quarter, but East Catholic's going to come back, and they're going to give it once again to Weber, and she fires and scores off the free position. And East Catholic would go on from there and get the victory. A 14-11 win for East Catholic, the three seed, moving on.
to take on the winner of the highlights from our next game. Old Saybrook at the second seed. Canton find a spot along the fence. That is tradition for the Warrior fans at Canton. Old Saybrook down four in the first half, trying to take advantage of the mistakes off the free position. Tristan Novakowski with the trigger to Karen Spots, and then Al Allison Kellenbach with the goal. 6-3 at this point. Old Saybrook, though, loses the momentum. Abigail Sharon, what a dodge for Canton. It's 7-3. Then Julianne Iovine off the free position. An 8-3 advantage for the Warriors. And now the Warriors are running. They're on the loose. Ashley Potter. And the goal right there. Canton knocks off Old Saybrook by 10. A 19-9 victory. So it'll be Canton taking on East Catholic. That will be next Tuesday. Again, they haven't decided where or when exactly they'll play. All right, so we're curious about that other semifinal. Who's going to be uh, heading that way? So for more on that, let's turn to one of our Sacred Heart University uh, uh, contributors, mm -hmm. uh, a, st a graduate student here who's been doing a terrific job with us. That is Cody Jones. Cody, I know you were dealing with some traffic issues today, as just about everybody else on the road was doing. Uh, tell us how it went for you today. Absolutely. Luckily, I was able to make it out to New Fairfield to see Granby taking on New Fairfield, number five versus number four. Now, these New Fairfield Rebels, they are the defending Class S champs, and they are going to look to keep their run going in 2018. First half, New Fairfield up by three. Freshman Regan Tenegali, Tenegali uh, scores to give the Rebels a 7-3 lead here. New Fairfield offense keeps rolling. Caitlin Nieves, she's going to net a goal here as the Rebels are going to go up 8-3 early. And then they're going to keep it going with Dominique DeMarsico scoring, extending New Fairfield's lead to 9-4 to at this point. Eight different players are going to score in this one for the Rebels as uh, you're going to see Daria Bach add to the lead here as they go up 11-4 to at this point as the defending Class S champs cruise to a 20-8 to victory in this one. And New Fairfield's going to have their work cut out for them on Tuesday as they'll take on the number one seed, North Brantford, in the semifinals. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Cody. Yes, indeed, he do. All right, we're going to continue on now. You like that? <laughs> I do. That's a technical <laughs> term for those of you unfamiliar uh, with they television. They taught about that at Arizona State University. <laughs> Taking a shot at my alma mater. No, no, like that not at all. all right. I was very impressed no. with your vocabulary. <laughs> thank you. Tr absolutely yeah. tremendous. <laughs> That's what ASU is known for, teaching <laughs> vocabulary. <laughs> So anyway, listen, there were some baseball games. We thought we were into that next round completely in baseball, but there were some games uh, that didn't get played so that fast. they had. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So uh, how about uh, Seymour taking on uh, Coggenshog? Class M, this is a second round game, so a lot of the second round games have been played, but not this one. A tight game. First inning here, Seymour's Dan Memente with the single here, and it brings in a run. And so the Wildcats have a one nothing lead. Top of the second now. one nothing, not good enough. Seymour's Nick Marchetti. Uh-oh, I think he got all of that one. Stay with it. Stay with it. No, you can't because it's over the fence. It's a home run, and it's a 2 nothing Seymour lead. Time for Coggenchog to put their bats to gear. Luke Garofalo says, let me have a whack at it, and that's what he does. He takes a big whack at it here. It's not going to leave the park, but it it's, may as well have. I say that because he slides in a third and then realizes he can come home. I understand he's heading off to Bryant to play baseball here. He's heading home to cut that deficit in half. It's two to one. Bottom of the seventh. You go to the pinch hitter. You bring in the freshman, Colby Pascarelli. He doubles in the tying run. We got a ball game. Two, two. It stayed that way until the top of the ninth inning. That's when Ethan Serzin. Oh, how about that? That's chutzpah right there, huh? <laughs> Lay down the squeeze bunt. The winning run comes in to score, and Seymour wins it by the final score of 3-2. to two. Seymour advancing. Seymour going to take on Northwest Catholic on Saturday. Uh, weather permitting, Northwest Catholic was a victor over Rocky Hill, 8-3. to three. You remember Rocky Hill pulled off the huge upset yeah. over uh, number one seed, yeah. Haddam Killingworth. That's right. The week. The, uh, yeah, a couple days ago. Yeah. So uh, there was also one softball game today in Class Double L. They wanted to get one of the quarterfinals uh, done. So that's where uh, Cheshire High came in and said, we'll host it. We are the three seed. We're going to take on the six seed. That would be Norwich Free Academy. So this one uh, at Cheshire, and boy, I tell you what, NFA coming out looking sharp. Both pitchers doing a nice job. Bailey Como with a strikeout to get out of the first. The, oh, my goodness, the rains came a little bit. 
and kind of got things a little uncomfortable, but NFA's Alexander Burdick will come up with a base hit in the top of the fifth, and the scoreless tie is no more. It's one nothing Wildcats. Then it's Como, the hard shot to short. It's a 3 nothing advantage. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Cheshire's got to start to rally. Ari Perlini starts the rally. The double makes it a 3-1 game. Bottom of the fifth still Lexi Hemstock. Hard sh shot to short. Everybody's safe. The run is in and the comeback is on. Cheshire rallies down 6-2. Comes back and wins it 7 to six, so the third seed in Class Double L, the defending state champs, uh, no, excuse me, the defending SEC, SEC champs, uh, moving on with the victory. They'll be in the semifinals, but they're the only team that's played a quarterfinal. The other three are scheduled for Friday, again, weather permitting. They'll take on the winner of the quarterfinal between uh, Trumbull and Newtown, and that one uh, will be played again tomorrow, as long as Mother Nature wants to watch it. So let me ask you a quick question. Where else are you going to find all, all, all the coverage of this high school sport? Uh, that's an easy question to answer, Noah, because the answer is nowhere else. You don't even need an Arizona State <laughs> University education to, to, get know that, that. to know that. That's answer. right. And, and, and we're not done yet. We're not done covering all of these high school uh, games. Is, is we're trying to cover as many of them as we possibly can through the CIAC State Tournament. We have volleyball coming up because there was a volleyball game that hadn't been played. was trying to catch up with the rest of the teams and track and field. We're heading up to New Britain, Willowbrook Park, the Class S Championships coming up. It's all coming up next here on CT Sports Now. I hope you'll stay with us. We've been saying it since we began. CT Sports Now, the only place where you're going to get the comprehensive coverage of state high school sports tournaments in this beautiful state of Connecticut. All season long, every season, right? Start, starting in the fall and going right through the spring. All right, so let's get to some volleyball action. For that, we bring in another one of our Sacred Heart University. Sacred Heart's been doing a, a great job bringing students through this program. Another one of our Sacred Heart University students, Ryan Sunudo. We love sending him out to cover volleyball because he's a volleyball player. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and he had a doozy to cover uh, tonight. Ryan? You know, I'm a backliner for uh, volleyball. And let me tell you, the backliners had a lot of, um, they were really getting, um, the ball's right to them. Number five, South Windsor at number four, New Canaan. South Windsor got into a groove early. Maxwell Iacovelli on the block, and they win the first set, 25 to 16, second set. Everyone for New Canaan on their toes fighting. Camden Nelson with the rejection and are creeping up on South Windsor, but Akil Rajesh had other plans. He gets it to go, and South Windsor wins the second set. Now, New Canaan wasn't quitting. They win the third set. 25 to 21, and just like that, the set point for New Canaan, Jonathan Hall's teardrop ties things at two. The bench is going crazy. The South Windsor, they respond in the fifth set. Colin Ryan and his strength for the point. Akil Rajesh on the left side for the win. And there you have it. South Windsor with a bit of a scare, but go on to win 18-16. And let me tell you, it was a very good game. They play the winner of Newington and Farmington, which is tomorrow for the Class M tournament. Guys, back to you. There's a good chance that that match will be played, <laughs> even if it's raining. So please, so no one, holes that, in the roof. Yeah. Please, no holes in the roof. <laughs> that one we can count on, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, track because uh, all week long, they, they, there are five divisions in Connecticut High School. Uh, outdoor track and and today the last uh, one was completed before the open which is on Monday and the champs and the best of all the classes get together at Willowbrook Park today class s the smallest schools on a beautiful evening at Willowbrook Park gathering here's the girls 200 meter final Chelsea Mitchell lane three out of Canton flying down the stretch to beat out Jillian uh, Marsh of Bloomfield and Zeandrea Ward of Weaver 29 25.98 the winning time and now you're looking at Jawan uh, excuse me, DeAndre Wo uh, Wallace of Holy Cross and Jaquan Hale of Derby. Hale, the winner of the high jump at 6-4. So Derby gets that. Some big points right there for Derby. And then in the boys' 200 meters, Jalon Neely of Bloomfield edging out Samuel Agaji of the Metropolitan Learning Center in a, uh, a time of 22.47 to win the 200. And uh, on the 
on the team side of things, Bloomfield wins the girls' championship with uh, Macklin and Old Saybrook tying for second. Derby, boys' champ over Bloomfield, Sacred Heart and Old Saybrook finishing in a tie for third. All right, we were scheduled to have boys and girls tennis championships today, but uh, the rain kind of played a little uh, havoc with that. The girls championships postponed till tomorrow. The boys started outside at Yale, but luckily Yale has some good indoor courts. So that's where they moved, Class L. Look at Andrew Forchetti of Notre Dame West Haven coming up with the ace, and the Green Knights go on to win that in Class L doubles action. Daniel Han getting the job done. Robert Israel, Noah Gula won in three sets. Daniel Han taking the Class L victory. In the Class Double L uh, singles here, smooth ace for Andrew Illy of the Golden Eagles of Trumbull. He wins in three sets. And there's the Double L doubles. That's hard to say. Tayoshi Hasakawa and Prem Dave showing great volleys coming up and winning in straight sets for the Norwalk Bears. So congratulations to the Bears. However, it's the Staples Wreckers taking the Double L class overall, the Western Trojans and Litchfield Cowboys winning Class M and S, respectively. Now we look forward to the Open Tournament, which will begin Saturday at Amity High School, weather permitting. Okay, no problems with the weather right now, and uh, we will have our fingers crossed. We're going to take a quick break and come back and continue here on CT Sports Now. Welcome back, CT Sports now here on Vantage Sports. Yeah, coming at you from our studios at Sacred Heart University. Just have some time to pass along some information. According to Mustafa Heron's Twitter account, mm -hmm. he is going to transfer from Auburn. He, of course, was a, a great basketball player at Sacred Heart High School, transferring to St. John's. I know some people were hoping maybe at Fairfield, maybe at UConn, but yeah. it appears that it's going to be St. John's. And he wants to apply for hardship and try to get eligible immediately. We'll see if that happens. Right. Ben Reeves, the Yale uh, All-American, wins the Tawarton, I believe that's how you pronounce it. As the player of the year, that's the Heisman, if you will, for, for uh, lacrosse. Imagine that for Yale. They have, they have the first, first Yale ever. And, and uh, the national champions. Kevin Freeman, former UConn star and assistant coach, is going to Penn State to be a basketball assistant. And East Hampton joining Coggenchog for a high school football co-op starting in this 2018 season. All right, I think we got it all in. We thank you for tuning in. Thanks for all the gang for showing up tonight. I hope they'll do so, and I hope you will again tomorrow. We'll see you then. Have a good night.